We begin with a problem plaguing cities coast to coast. Leaders from some of the nation's largest companies saying crime is impacting their businesses, even going as far as saying it is putting their workers in danger. It's becoming a bigger and bigger issue, including in San Francisco, where a new poll reveals the shocking number of residents who say they have been targets of robbery. Correspondent Sloan Glass joining us now with more on this crime wave across the country. Sloan? Natasha, Wednesday, the McDonald's CEO pointed to his restaurant as a microcosm of the nation, saying one of the things about McDonald's is whatever is happening, good or bad, you can be sure it's happening in a McDonald's. Just one of many businesses who have invested millions into the cities where they built stores or headquarters and are vocalizing their frustration with the rise in crime. <laughs> Overall, the major city's Chiefs Association mid-year comparison survey, violent crime has risen 4.4 percent from last year among 70 cities. In San Francisco, where crime is up 8 percent over a year ago, nearly half of those polled said they've been victims of robberies. And in New York, the spike in overall violent crime is 35 percent higher than the same time last year. In Chicago, where crime is up 38 percent. Business leaders are speaking out. Headquartered in Chicago, McDonald's CEO Chris Kemschinski said crime is changing the psyche of his employees and customers. We have 400 restaurants across this city uh, employing uh, tens of thousands of people. And it's felt most significantly every single day in the restaurants. Um, and it's felt in a number of different ways. It's felt with uh, certainly we have uh, violent crime that's happening in our restaurants. So we see in our restaurants every single day what's happening in, so in society at large. News Nation has reached out to Mayor Lightfoot's office for a response to the McDonald's CEO speech Wednesday. Getting back to us Friday, the mayor's press office said, Thank you for your inquiry, and we will get back to you if we have something to share. Kaminsky said crime is deterring employees from coming back into the office, and smaller businesses are seeing that hesitation in their customers. We are one of the first bakeries, and it's really making me think, where should I go next? Because if it's not safe for me and my business and my customers, my employees, like this is not a great place for us anymore, even though Chicago is a growing city. Bowie. Citadel and Caterpillar have left or plan on leaving Chicago. And down south, nine years after its opening, Starbucks is closing its flagship Canal Street location in New Orleans, citing security concerns. This move by Starbucks is on par with their July decision to close 16 stores around the country, citing safety issues. And as we approach the elections, voters will be able to send a message about crime. In an exclusive News Nation Decision Desk HQ poll on crime, when asked, thinking about the 2022 congressional elections, how important is the issue of crime in making your decision about who to vote for? 87% of people said crime was very or somewhat important in their voting decision. Natasha. Yeah, those statistics certainly interesting. Sloan Glass, thank you so much. And joining us now to discuss this issue further is the National Police Association spokesperson, Betsy Brantner Smith. Betsy, great to see you. Thank you for making the time. Thanks for having me. I mean, I want to start in Chicago. I, I know you've worked for years in a major suburb. What is going on mm -hmm. with these businesses? And do you think more are just going to follow suit? Well, I think they're absolutely going to have to. I mean, here's the thing, especially the woman-owned businesses in the city of Chicago, those small business owners just don't feel safe. And it's not just the retail crime, but it's the potential for dangerous violent crime, especially for a woman. Very often a woman in a, in a business, especially if she's all alone, that retail theft or that burglary can turn into a sexual assault or some other sort of violent crime. So that's very, very difficult. And it's so sad. I love the city of Chicago. But I'll tell you, two out of my four adult kids moved out of the city in the last year because it just got too dangerous. Yeah, that anecdote striking. And, you know, we've, we've heard about crime in Chicago for a while now, but what does it mean when a CEO like the one for McDonald's is so public about this? 
Well, I think what the CEO of McDonald's is trying to do is bring attention to this issue. You know, and he did it. He did it in a very apolitical way, I thought. And that's the thing. And, and your survey, you know, Sloan's survey showed that this is a major concern for most Americans, crime in America. So when the CEO of one of the largest companies in, in our nation, McDonald's, says he's got to get his people out of there, People need to take notice. This should not be a political issue, but this should be an important issue for Republicans, Democrats, and especially for the citizens of the United States. I mean, I absolutely hear you. And we're talking about big numbers here, right? I mean, Chicago up 38%, New York up 35%. Uh, to what do you attribute the alarming rise in crime? Well, it's a number of things. First of all, it's the last two and a half years of the vilification of American law enforcement, lying about American law enforcement, calling us racist, uh, and saying that we're doing things that we're not doing. Then you take that and you take prosecutors like Kim Fox in Cook County and uh, George Gascon in LA and Larry Krasner in Philadelphia, I could go on and on, who want to try to keep people out of prison rather than putting people in prison and keeping them there who have committed crime. Basically, our, the American justice system in the last two and a half years has become a criminal-centric system, not a victim-centric system. And so people all over this nation are paying for it with very often with their lives. I, I hear your perspective, and I appreciate your time so much. Betsy Brantner-Smith, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Meanwhile, Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.